Life Audio. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations. We want families to come here and gain insightful strategies that empower them to successfully teach diverse learners at home. Hosted by founder and CEO of Sped Homeschool, Peggy Ployer. Our goal is that these powerful weekly conversations will boost your confidence to cultivate the best at-home learning environment for your student. For more homeschool resources, go to spedhomeschool.com. You're listening to Empowering Homeschool Conversations with Peggy Ployer. We'll start the conversation with Peggy and her guests next. The best-selling illustrative Bible for kids and teens, the Action Bible, is now better than ever. The Action Bible Faith in Action Edition is an interactive Bible specifically created for kids and teens ages 7 to 15. The Faith in Action Edition is designed to engage young readers in God's Word through hundreds of vividly illustrated Bible stories in chronological order with activities and games. Readers will grow in God's Word by using QR codes, providing free access to over 2,000 devotionals, hundreds of prayers, character stories, teaching videos, maps, timelines, and much more. Additionally, the Action Bible Faith in Action Edition allows readers to explore the major themes of the Bible like courage, faith, hope, love, service, trust, and wisdom. Each theme provides practical advice on how to live out God's Word. The Action Bible Faith in Action Edition is the best interactive Bible you can purchase for your child or teen. Purchase your copy today at Sam's Club, Barnes & Noble, or Amazon. Feeling stressed? Let's take better care of you. I'm Bonnie Gray, the host of Breathe, the Stress Less Podcast. Subscribe at lifeaudio.com. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations, provided by Sped Homeschool, a nonprofit that empowers families to home educate diverse learners. To learn more, visit spedhomeschool.com. Here's Peggy Ployer. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Empowering Homeschool Conversations. Today, we are going to learn how to persevere through difficult homeschooling seasons. And I've got my my a special guest, um, Sonia. And Sonia, I just totally dropped your last name. That's okay. <laughs> Sonia Lagoon. My yes, God. yes. So <laughs> welcome and and thank you for joining us for this conversation. I told Sonia ahead of time, I said, these are my favorite favorite types of conversations where we just kind of really, you know, talk about the stuff that's heavy on our hearts as homeschool parents, that um, there are difficult seasons. And I sometimes hint at that when I'm speaking with a guest. And then we just kind of say, oh, yeah, well, remember this. And then we move on to, you know, some how to. Um, We're going to really focus on those those difficult times and just what we have to learn in and through them. And so Sonia is sharing with us and um, some of her difficult seasons. I'm going to pop in with some of mine. Um, So we were going to kind of go back and forth and we pray that this hour will just be an encouragement to you, especially if you feel like, I just don't even know if I can move on um, or do this thing. And, um, We just want this to be an encouragement to you. So hang on, hang on for this conversation. So Sonia, again, welcome. Thank you for for being willing to share. I would love for our audience to get to know you a little bit and about, you know, how you got started homeschooling and anything else you want to share with us about yourself or your family. Sure. Um, I always wanted to homeschool. It was really? always something I wanted to do. I tend to take on big projects and do things <laughs> out of the norm. Um, so even before my daughter, or my first daughter was born, and she's adopted both my children, or my family grows through adoption. Um, oh, that's awesome. And so, you know, it was something I had always planned to do. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to jump right in and find the best program and do the best. Um, awesome. And you find out that life throws different things at you and (laughs) you don't, it doesn't go how you really think it's going to go. Isn't that true? Yes. And so, you know, I've, my 12 year old has been with us. We were matched before um, she was born and we brought her home from the hospital. And then our 13 year old uh, joined us in 2019 
Okay. And so, um, and we're in the process of adopting from foster care again, which is a big pro- process um, oh, yes. to go through. And like I said, I just, my family, um, we just, we just go gung ho. And if there's something we want to do, we do it and we make it work. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, what I have found through myself having a physical disability, I am a yes. and my 12 year old um, is diagnosed with ADHD. Um, we're suspecting an autism diagnosis, but that's been kind of overshadowed by a right. lot of um, hard moments with the ADHD. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. And so everything that I thought how it was going to go, didn't, <laughs> it didn't go that way. And, right. you know, I love that you sought me out because nothing went how I wanted it to. But that's the Lord's work. He, exactly. for whatever reason, he trusted me with yes. these children and he's humbled me a lot <laughs> and put, helped me persevere through some really hard times. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking before this conversation, you know, as we 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 both kind of went to prayer before we we um we decided what we were going to talk about today. And the one thing that came up is I give this talk on homeschooling doubt, and one mom got up and afterwards and said to me, "You mean if I try to even do everything right, it doesn't mean everything will go right?" Mm. And um and I said, "Yeah." That's just the way things work. And and we we have so many lessons, though, to learn through that. So I'm super excited for you to share, Sonia, just the lessons that you have learned and persevering through through hard times um, and and the blessings. You know, we can't forget those things. There, there's so many blessings that come out of us pushing through and 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 really grasping onto that calling and it seems like from a very young age you know even before you had kids you you felt that homeschool calling mm-hmm. so that is really cool yeah and i you, definitely i wanted i wanted to be in, as involved as i could be in my yeah. kids i kind of dream of still traveling you know my dream yeah. of getting an rv and traveling the country isn't quite is realistic. Um, I mean, I could get an RV that's wheelchair accessible, but you know, we'll find other means to do that. Right. Um, yeah. But you know, I just, it has been such a blessing to me to watch my kids succeed. Yeah. You know, I think about, and this is, this is no way, you know, that I have any negative thoughts about kids going to brick and mortar school Mm -hmm. or anything like that. But when I'm in the nitty gritty (laughs) of what my children are doing and I can, I can celebrate that, you know, I remember when my, my 12 year old was doing preschool work and she had trouble with um, patterns. Oh, so we worked with that a lot and all of a sudden she got it. And we yeah. celebrated and she was so proud of herself. Oh, and those are the awesome. moments where you just know that that you're there for a reason. Right. Um, to persevere through through those hard times. Yeah. It's it's those small victories, those those small yes. celebrations and and not just the big goals that matter that really do help us get through. It's the um, yeah, we we often say, well, you know, when we get through this, then I'll, you know, we'll be there, mm. you know, and, but it's seeing those tiny little steps instead of those big leaps and, and celebrating those. That's, yeah. that is um, great. And, and I'm sure your daughter then too was able to be more encouraged in pushing yes. through some of the other hard things too. Yeah. So, yeah. So you're not only setting an example as yourself, but you're also helping her to learn that. That's Yeah. You know, cool. you said something about expecting things to get easier. And honestly, <laughs> in my, in my life, I have kind of stopped expecting them to get easier. I yeah. really have. You know, uh-huh. when I started homeschooling, I was still ambulatory. I was still walking a little bit. You know, and then wow. I'm fully wheelchair bound now. Um, right. And, you know, things aren't getting easier. But at the same time, what I also have had to learn is it was very hard when I was still walking. That was something right. that was very difficult for me to do. So once I accepted some mobility help, 
some mobility mm-hmm. devices, I was able to enjoy things better. Oh, you know, I was yeah. able to not focus on the difficulty I had walking through the store or taking my daughter somewhere or keeping up with her. Um, right. Now I have the ability to keep up with her, though. She, I remember, she was a fast <laughs> runner. She was oh, faster wow. than my scooter as a baby, too. And just... <laughs> You know, she had energy out the wazoo. Um, and, <laughs> you know, it, it, but I, the only thing that I really push for is now what kind of interventions can I have? What yeah. kind of help can I have? Um, what are things supposed to look like? I have to be mm-hmm. willing to change my picture of how things are going to be. After a word from our sponsor, we'll dive back into this conversation. The best-selling illustrative Bible for kids and teens, the Action Bible, is now better than ever. The Action Bible Faith in Action Edition is an interactive Bible specifically created for kids and teens ages 7 to 15. The Faith in Action Edition is designed to engage young readers in God's Word through hundreds of vividly illustrated Bible stories in chronological order with activities and games. Readers will grow in God's Word by using QR codes, providing free access to over 2,000 devotionals, hundreds of prayers, character stories, teaching videos, maps, timelines, and much more. Additionally, the Action Bible Faith in Action Edition allows readers to explore the major themes of the Bible like courage, faith, hope, love, service, trust, and wisdom. Each theme provides practical advice on how to live out God's Word. The Action Bible Faith in Action Edition is the best interactive Bible you can purchase for your child or teen. Purchase your copy today at Sam's Club, Barnes & Noble, or Amazon. I'm Don Hawkins, and I once heard Chick-fil-A founder Truett Cathy say, you can tell if a person needs encouragement, check to see if they're breathing. I'd like to invite you to my weekly podcast, Encouragement for You, featuring encouraging guests like Dr. Greg and Aaron Smalley, Dan Cathy, the late Dr. Frank Menrith, Josh McDowell, and more. To subscribe to my weekly Encouragement for You podcast, go to lifeaudio.com. That's lifeaudio.com. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations, provided by Sped Homeschool. Go to spedhomeschool.com to get resources and support for teaching your unique learner at home. I started my a blog a while ago, and I was documenting wanting to do Charlotte Mason Method. I thought it was beautiful. Uh-huh. The books were fantastic. Well... I also now have a daughter with reading challenges and dyslexia and attention span and as beautiful as it is and as amazing as I thought that was the perfect thing to have a child do, it didn't work for us. Right. It did not work for me. It didn't work for her. And we had to let go of it. And honestly, that, that is, we have to identify those things as a loss. Yes, we really yeah. do. And we do grieve through those as well. We do. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, the if you can identify that, it's not that you weren't capable. It's right. not that you failed. Yeah. But it is something that just wasn't in the plans. You know, yes. Heavenly Father wants us to put forth effort. And yeah. he's not going to direct us in everything we do. If we think he's going to do that, you know, you're going to be waiting a while. Sometimes you have to move forward you first. Just have, right, exactly. And experience it and then pray and say, okay, <laughs> can I do this other thing? And we've right. done that a lot in our home, a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. And, it and it's okay. I, I've changed curriculums mid-school year so many mm-hmm. times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in those younger years, too, because... exactly. The children change their learning style and mm-hmm. their abilities and their their focus. So yes. that's really important to understand. Yeah, those those are some great points because I think we just feel like, oh yeah, every you know, it's gonna we just we pick the one and that's what we go with. And mm-hmm. and we've done many even this yeah, like you said, the same child, all of a sudden we hit something new and it's like, oh, 
reevaluate all of that and and let's just figure out what'll work now. Um, I my oldest was the only one that stuck to unit studies from beginning to end. Mm. My other two, it was very eclectic mixes of whatever I could get them to do sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I yeah, that. you just the unit studies are through. so beautiful, aren't they? I mean, they I remember are. preschool, I had the boxes set up and we mm-hmm. learned learned that way. And I thought it was so fun. And, um, you know, it, it may work now, but it's, I'm trying to have my daughters be in de- gain some independence in their, their right. schooling, their middle school age. Um, oh, yes. And that's when so, we switched but, to. Yeah. 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 And so, um, you know, those, those are lovely things. And I, I would have loved to do that too, but isn't it funny how, you know, whatever we have in mind, it, we can't put what we think is best on our children because we aren't our children. Right. And yeah, you know, they, we're just entrusted with them. Heavenly father knows so. that. Yes, and exactly. So we have to remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And they each have such unique needs and turning to God and saying, what's best for this child? Now, what's best for me? Because sometimes it requires a lot more work mm-hmm. on my part <laughs> to, to get this child where they need to go. Right. But that's my job as a parent. That's my job as their teacher. Um, and and maybe I don't know what I'm doing. That means that I need to, to gain wisdom from other people. Um, I need to, to reach out and say, I need help. Um, that's a hard thing to say. <laughs> Yeah, because we we think we should be able to do it all all on our own. But to reach out and say, I, I don't know, I I don't know what's going on. I need I need somebody else's advice, wisdom to to look into my situation and see it from a different perspective, so that I can be the best I can be uh, for this child. Right, and yeah. look look out for other resources. Yes. You know, that's one thing that we're finally getting into is resources for our children, um, especially my daughter with more needs. Um, you know, I think, and this is no way me saying I'm we're good at it, <laughs> but we try our hardest and we yes. make, we are fully engaged in trying to help our children succeed that it's hard to communicate sometimes to the professionals how yes. difficult it is day to day. And so yeah. finally, you know, we're getting in-home IBHS, um, intensive behavioral okay. health services. And, you know, I'm starting to qualify for in-home help myself. Mm-hmm. And to accept that stuff, you know, I people say the calm before the storm. I feel honestly <laughs> right now that I'm in the storm before the calm. Oh. Because, <laughs> you know, we kind of changed stuff up that was for the best of my kids. And it is taking right. a lot out of me right now. Oh, it yeah. really is. We changed yeah. um, to we're in a public charter school right now. And, okay. yeah. you know, I am full out partner with my 12 year olds <laughs> teachers. I am there oh. sitting, sitting there. I'm not designing the curriculum. I feel like they're my curriculum and right. I'm overseeing it and they're implementing because I love curriculum design. I, <laughs> I found out really quick that I do not like implementing curriculum design. <laughs> you know, what I <laughs> so, you know, I've, I've had to um, trust the village. I am really learning right now to trust the village. Yeah. And surround myself with the people that will be the best for our family and our children. And, and that's, that's hard sometimes. It is. It's especially hard when you feel like you've been called to to teach and to homeschool because the kind of the mentality of the typical homeschooler is, well, we just can do it all ourselves. Um, right. But when you have special situations, when you have kids who need help, that is not healthy at all. No. We need to build a team around us. And that's different for everybody's situation. And we can't judge what help somebody else needs to homeschool or to, right. to just be able to teach their child. And that's Absolutely. that's gonna require different things for different children and different seasons and places. And um I think if we do put those those uh, stringent um, rules upon ourselves, that's when we see that we're hurting when we homeschool Mm. because we aren't allowing ourselves to be open to everything that God has made available for us. Absolutely. You hit that right on the head. That's it. I learned that the hard way too, because yes, we had three of Mm. my, my, 
siblings. So uh, long story short, um, I have 10 adopted siblings all through foster care. Okay. Um, and so you so, know that story. So I know that. your story very well. <laughs> and three of my siblings actually came to do emergency foster care with our okay. family for about a year and a half um, before my parents were able to to bring them in. They ended. Up, they were actually children of one of my adopted brothers. Okay. So, um, so my my nieces and nephews are my brothers and sisters now. That that in itself, our family tree, we don't connect anything anymore. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, knowing that you know we we needed help desperately because here I had you know kids on the spectrum, and I had lots of chaos coming in with kids getting pulled out of a meth house that were now in my house. <laughs> And, and, you know, it's just the, the craziness that ensued from, from that. And, um, and so, so yes, you do need to ask for help because I, I actually had adrenal failure because for a while I didn't ask for help and I was only sleeping two hours a night and that was not healthy. And so, yeah, you just, you can't do it. You can't, when you were, when mom's not there, then everything starts falling apart. (laughs) Right. And, you know, you feel like if you're called to do this, that this is what you're supposed to do, you know, you need to just push through and do it and make it work. But that's not, yes, this is what we're called to do, but it looks different for everybody. Right. And it's okay to reach out and, and do those things. And it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's different, a, especially especially from the adoption side. You know, you don't mm-hmm. really know what to expect. Right. You know, they you don't, don't share genetics. I mean, a lot of people have their own kids on special, not their own kids, um, birthed to them that genetically are related that end up with something unexpected show up that you have to deal with. Um, but you really have no idea in the end how things are going to work. Yeah, you don't. You absolutely don't. But God does. And God that, absolutely does. <laughs> that's and, the hope that we live in. <laughs> and we have to praise him for entrusting him with these children. How humbling right. is it that God entrusted us with these really special souls yeah. and, you know, difficulties? You know, sometimes I can think about what their lives would be like otherwise. Right. And I'm so blessed to be able to give them the best life the Heavenly Father wanted for them. Even if some days I feel like I'm failing or I need to repent. Yes. Um, <laughs> they, we are still doing doing God's work. Yeah. And we're only human. We cannot be perfect. Oh. And um, so we we hold ourselves to a super high standard and we should have a, you know, a high standard, but yet we shouldn't have it so high that it crushes us. Right. Um, God is merciful and he is gracious and he is, he's humble and lowly and he wants, he wants so much to give us so much. We, ha- and again, that's where we have to be willing to receive. Absolutely. There's been some times yeah. that, um, and, and, and I wrote it down cause I was looking through my, my journals yeah. and just my thoughts that I had and I felt like I was just not doing enough. I wasn't even coming close to doing enough it 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 was a season of rest is what it was yes. but I felt bad about <laughs> we it have those. and oh, yeah you know I just got this really strong feeling that you know what you're putting things into this basket you're putting things into this child and it's not going to go away right you know it, you're you don't have to keep filling filling this up and it's leaking out if you don't keep it up at the pace that you were before those things are still those things are still there and those memories are still there you know do I want to do special things every special holiday you know (laughs) and you know I didn't do anything for homeschool (laughs) Valentine's Day this year and you know some years we do that stuff some years we don't right and and it's okay it's okay to be where you are and mm-hmm. our children will remember when we did it. And I don't think, hopefully they don't remember when we did it. Right. You know? <laughs> so, you know, just, just one example, you know, we can, we can be okay in our rest. Yes. Heavenly yes. Father does not want us to run faster than we can run. Exactly. And, and I have tried to run way faster. I think that's, I yeah, 
That's a, a common um, predicament that many parents who have struggling kids find themselves in because we think yeah. if I just do more, if I, um, mm. if, if I find the right, you know, curriculum, if I find the right therapy, then things are just going to be better. They're going to be fixed. And, you know, somewhat, yes, but if God wants that, you know, he's going to put it right in front of you. <laughs> you just have to pray and ask him and um, in the right timing, it will be there. Oh, timing. Timing is one of my greatest testimonies of God's yeah. timing. Oh, tell and me. I just, everything in my life has never happened the way I wanted it to, <laughs> but when it has. But when you look back and things have happened, right? it has been right in there. Even from, from the birth of my daughter, uh, it's my wow. 12-year-old, she, I had in my heart that she was going to be born on a really snowy day. Really? And... <laughs> That year came and gone, but that next year she was, we were matched and she was born on a really snowy day. Oh, and, wow. <laughs> you know, it's just those tender mercies that the Lord has for you. Right. You know? And, and I actually talked about this in, in my Sunday school class the other day of you have to make decisions for where you are right now. Oh, that's that so is, true. Yes. That was such a huge thing. And I gave the example, you know, I, I was, there was a nice little preschool that, you know, she went for three hours a day and it was a nice break for me. Right. You know, I still homeschooled, but she got to go there. And that's honestly where I started realizing how difficult her behaviors were, but it wasn't for a while that yeah. um, we really figured it out. But um, we were building a house and in my mind, I'm like, we're not going to be living close to this preschool. I don't know if I'm going to re-enroll her and, and all of that. And f a couple times, just the Lord, it, this isn't the only time, but has said, you just have to do right now for the situation that you're in. Just, oh, yes. you know, if you have this picture of six months down the road, a year from now, you know, you know, better, you, right. you know, that, your picture in your mind is not going to be the way life it's is going to happen. No, so just exactly. make those decisions. Mm -hmm. And I've done that several times with my children. Yeah. So and scripture good. teaches us that too, you know, li live today, you, you know, don't worry about yes. tomorrow. Um, and so those, oh, those decisions that the now is what's most important. Your kids are here now and yes. it's not, you know, Yes, we, we want the best for them in the future. But if you don't do what's here and now, that future is going to be changed as well. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. what like we already said, your curriculum is going to change. Yes. Their needs are going to change. You know, my, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I hate, am, I'm struggling because our 13 year old is so much a part of our family, but I don't know her, her history as much. And you know, yeah. we're, we're embracing all of that, but, you know, as a, a special education homeschool, you know, I'm mm -hmm. really focusing on my 13 year old that, that, um, I really have to concentrate on a lot of times. Um, and I lost my train of thought of where I was going to go with that. Oh, that's okay. Oh, we'll come uh, back to that. <laughs> she, she struggled with reading for a long time. And then oh, okay. all of a sudden she's reading back on grade level. You know, we got in touch. Mm. I never knew that a speech language pathologist was going to help her with reading. Oh. I didn't know that. And I don't know if you've covered that at all in your, in your programs, but you know, she was in a, occupational therapy and they suggested just some S SLP for, I think her THs. Oh, but then yeah. we had a wonderful speech language pathologist that really worked on phonetics and yes, we used all about reading, which I love that. The phonemic program. awareness is so important as a, a component yeah. of reading. Yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then my 13 year old, when she joined us, she's a heavy reader. She loves books. She loves oh, being awesome. in books. So that example paired with the resources, she's reading on grade level now. And I never imagined wow. that already in sixth grade, she would be able to do that. And oh my goodness, does it week. make it so much easier to like write right. chores out and things <laughs> like that? She can look at it there or 
you know, we can communicate. We limit electronics as much as we try to, um, you know, as we know, ADHD kids right. really yeah. thrive on them, but using them as a proper tool, but she'll text me. And some of those messages are just so um, succinct and wonderful that wow. it like puts, it puts it in your heart. And I'm like, she can do this now. Right. And that's yeah. wonderful. Oh, that's cool. And it's such neat yeah. stories that, you know, of, of just small things, trusting things, you know, and um, when, and it seems like when we, I don't know if this is the same for you, but um, when we get that into that panic mode too much mm. that we can't think about those small fixes and those small changes. Right. We, we kind of overflow everything out of proportion and we, we can't make those, those, those intricate changes that, that can happen that can create such, you know, large amounts of success. Yeah. You know, we get in our minds too much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, as we go on, those doubts and those feelings of failing and, you know, through prayer and seeing those successes can limit it. But they're still there. Right. Yeah. You know, exactly. hopefully each time they come, they're a little less. Right. But they're, but they're there. And I think that's, that's, you know, we have to be ready to do that. And, you know, going back to, you know, kind of the idea of, you know, what, how does my life impact what I can do too. Right. You know, it's only until now that, you know, I have a wheelchair van. Mm-hmm. I, you know, have a one story house that I can get around and I can take my children places yeah. that were very difficult before with just the way things, you know, I was just using a scooter and trying right. to maintain my mobility. Right. And now I feel like I am, I'm being able to give them those experiences that I wanted. Right. Yeah. Sometimes we, we lose part of ourselves to gain more. Um, Mm -hmm. I know through my cancer journey, I found that was the same thing is I had to give up a lot Mm -hmm. of what I thought was important, what I thought defined me. Um, But in the end, it was what freed me. And, um, and I, I think we do hold on sometimes too hard to things that God's like, just get that stuff out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, did you learn, yeah. did you learn through that of letting people serve you? Were there people in your life that came and served you that maybe you wouldn't have asked for help? And I, I never really took wisdom very well from other people, but through that process, because I was diagnosed with cancer the same week that COVID hit. Um, and you can just imagine just how crazy and how, my life and was. And how difficult that was. It's probably isolating too. Very isolating, yes. But I, You were probably on your own a lot in the hospital and their visits. Yep. And oh. um, and so my neighbor down the street, you said you listened to my, um, yes. my interview with Lisa. I wanted to be in yes. that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that so Lisa and I would just sit out on the front lawn and she would just speak truth into my life about all the medical things that she had been through. And, you know, I was a sponge. The first time in my life, I was really willing to listen because I was so desperate. Um, And yet, you know, through that process, I lost both my breasts. I, um, you know, my my family just, they grieved possibly the loss of me. Um, And it was, it was just a crazy time. But um, in that letting go, just how much God used that to say, finally, all this stuff is out of the way. Now I can like put in what I wanted there (laughs) in the first place. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, but it takes sometimes humbling of us in order to make those things happen. And that refining fire, right. Fire and to be willing to, to be molded. Sometimes when we're molded, it's not a, it's not a fun process. No, it? no, <laughs> it's not at all. <laughs> you know, and and I think we try hard too. I, I don't know about you, but just kind of hiding the struggles, but right. in a right space for our kids and just mm-hmm. just moving through that, um, right? You know, 
COVID was, I mean, we all, we all have our struggles through COVID. Right. Um, it's, it, the fun, a fun story about our family. Yeah. So my 13 year old was going to public school and she was technically still in foster care. Okay. Um, and but she was with us the whole time. And as soon as, as soon as her adoption was finalized, I was going over to the school district, uh-huh. submitting my papers to homeschool, and, you know, she was going to be done with school. And, and rightfully so. She was kind of sad to leave her friends, and we right. had to talk about that. But the day that it was, um, we went to the courthouse. We were celebrating with our family, mm-hmm. and all of us got text messages and phone calls that our state was school- shutting down all the schools. Oh, so wow. she was really sad that, you know, she wasn't going to be able to go back to school with her friends. And we yeah, but her friends weren't going to be there. To school. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody went back to school. Um, but what's the silver lining in all of that is our family grew close yeah. together. Honestly, it was just what our family needed. You know, my mm. husband was able to come home and work from home at that point. Right. And we were all just in the house together. Right. And learning to be a family. And that mm-hmm. was wonderful and learning how to get help, you know, when, when you adopt a child that is used to just succeeding on her own in school, I right. have to teach her how to, it's okay to come ask you for help. I love teaching. Please, right. please yep. come have me teach you, you know, especially <laughs> math stuff and in those oh. things. So, and it, and it grew out of that. And right. we have to look back and really appreciate see see those good in the bad you know it doesn't mean we don't have things to grieve and we Mm -hmm. need to grieve those but um but yeah we need to put down those pillars of success and and to remember that god was faithful and that he mm. answered that prayer and this is how he answered it and let's relive that let's talk about that i mean when um when the Israelites came into the promised land, they put those 12 stones on the side of the river. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they were said, you know, when your children ask you why those are there, you tell them God provided these are, you know, um, Mm -hmm. a marker for that. And if we create those markers throughout our lives, it's, it's not the happy stuff. Usually it's the hard stuff that God brought us through that we bring ourselves memory back to and say, yes, God was there. He provided and he's going to provide now through whatever we're going through now. Yeah. And, and bearing our testimony to our children. You know, you're yes. you're speaking truth to me and reminding me that, <laughs> you know, in in my life I need to make room for more scripture study. Mm. More more of those things first and and feeling the spirit. And because, you know, a lot of it, when it's hard, you try to just do the checklist. Yeah. And, you know, so how true. can we strengthen our children? By giving them, you know, the power of the Holy Ghost in right. their life, the power of prayer mm-hmm. to reach out. And, you know, one thing that I'm trying to do is be more visible about my scripture yeah. study. Do my children mm-hmm. really yeah. appreciate that every night when I'm laying in bed, I'm reading my scriptures on my phone? They don't see it, you know, right. and so I have to talk about it mm-hmm. or find time to to bring that in front of them so they can they can feel that. Right. And just know that, you know, it isn't you that they are essentially trusting in. It's you and God that they're trusting in. Absolutely. And um, and so, yes, mom fails. I mean, I've told my kids, please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I messed up again. But yes. God does not fail. And I can turn to him. He's going to forgive me just the same way you can, you know, turn to God. He's going to forgive you. And we're just walking this out together. Um, There's a lot of things that I've never been through. You know, I feel sorry for my oldest. He went through the most. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that true of the oldest children? I'm the oldest in my family. So I, you know. I am too. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, it's just the nature of it. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. But and, yeah. and we need to, to practice that humility with mm-hmm. our children. You know, I try to do better next time, but I'm quick to apologize when yeah. we're calmed down and, and things were hard and but we right. we address it and we humble ourselves to our children. Exactly. And, you know, teach that humility to our children as much as we can. Yeah. And, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. And it, it, that that brings me to, you know, I just kind of crossed my mind. I told you when the Holy Spirit's going to throw something at Absolutely. me. Absolutely. <laughs> but, um, you know, we always want our lessons for our children to come from those happy places. But some of the best, <laughs> some of the best lessons come from those hard places. And we forget that we forget that those are the, the best homeschooling moments that we can embrace instead of saying, Oh no, I'm, you know, I'm going to shut down. We're not going to, you know, no learning's going on. Chaos has ensued. No, this is a perfect teachable moment. <laughs> oh, and isn't that what Christ did during yes. his ministry? We just, um, talked about this because we're studying the New Testament this year and the this account of the man with palsy and his four friends oh, bring yes. him into the house right tear, you know pull apart this tear wooden the roof, apart, right? uh, the roof yes. apart and drop him in the middle of you know yeah. Christ was teaching was speaking to people who doubted him and didn't believe in him right. and you know Christ took what others would have been an interruption as an opportunity. Right. Do Absolutely. we take those interruptions as opportunities? Mm-hmm. And I think that is key. Yeah. That is key. It really because, is. And how many interruptions do we have? <laughs> Not all interruptions need to be a teaching most, opportunity. Most of the day. You know, like, right, <laughs> right. As soon as, as soon as I get, you know, as soon as I get one kid focused on school, the other one comes up and interrupts. Right. You know, I'm like, ah, I will come back and help you in a minute. Yeah. You know, but, <laughs> but they, you know, I love that they are willing to come to me too. So, right. You know, I can learn teach teach about interruptions <laughs> those are life lessons too exactly you know? yes yeah. yeah you know and in can i go i this is bringing it to mind for yes. me uh-huh. go taking for it. it to my physical disability yes you know the those friends which was a whole lesson on friends bringing people to healing and right. kind of speaks to that, yeah. you know, being served, being willing mm-hmm. to be served and taken. But at the same time, Christ, they, the first thing he did was heal his sins, forgave his sins. He forgave his and sins. And then he yes. told him to stand up and walk. Right. And there are so many times that I have met with some people that kind of expect to pray over me and I be physically healed. I don't Mm. expect that. And I take those stories in the New Testament as um, it was, it was just a way of Christ to kind of show an instant miracle because you can't see the instant miracle of forgiving somebody's sins. And that is what Christ is, was for. Right. Yeah. He said, I came to redeem and save the lost. That, that was his purpose. And it's okay that, I will never be healed from this. It's okay. It's yeah. hard, um, but I don't get angry with God mm. about it. Right. I, I'm not saying I never was. You know, yeah. I, he took my friend early last year in February, wow. and you know, she had it was my best friend, and she mm. had the same similar diagnosis. You know, looking back, I could see you know through our conversations and things that. You know, she really was on her decline. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reality of that hits hard. Yeah. You know, how do you you focus on that? You you had your your experience with cancer. Mm-hmm. You know, you can look at all the people around you and have those quiet, desperate moments of what does my future future hold? And right. we have to just trust in God that, you know, I hope he's not going to be done using me for a really long time um so i can i can do that but you know how do you persevere through those moments because i didn't deal with it in a healthy way very well Mm. just because i didn't even let my children know you have to i put on a happy face and Mm. let them i mean they did know but they didn't know the grief and the tears at night because that would have been too much for them Especially yeah. my kiddo with ADHD, she really worries. You know, mm. I, I had one instance where, oh my goodness, I 
my scooter fell backwards. I hit the pavement, Uh-oh. bleeding at the school. And as Uh-oh. I'm putting in homeschool, my homeschool yeah. affidavit. And, you know, she was so concerned about me for years Uh-oh. after that. Now she's doing better. But, you know, we and have it's to, hard. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of people probably have that, that in there of that anxiety. Right. Yeah. That sense of failure. And how do we... You know, yeah, you really have to, yeah, and you really have to reframe it and keep reframing it because the sin nature of our brain wants to focus on you know, the worst outcomes that God isn't there, that he won't provide, you know, and so we go into these dark places where God is not at. Um, We've yeah. been through um, just, I, I kind of led on to it a little bit. I did a end of year um, video with our community. I've had a really hard year with one of my children to the point where he moved out. We didn't know where he went. Um, he's been, oh, it's just been awful. Um, but God spoke to me when he was very young that he would one day speak for him. And I have clung to that truth through just mental and physical hell um, this last year of not, you know, knowing what his life was going to be, where he was, what he was doing. Um, But trusting God above what I could have, you know, those rabbit trail thoughts and things that, you know, haunted me when I was going to bed and, you know, couldn't sleep at night. Um, Because God, God's word is true. And what he said will come true. Um, it doesn't mean I'm going to see it right now. Yes. And um, and there's the switch over. That's where God's peace comes in. That's where we we feel things and experience him in a way that the world cannot experience it. And, um, and those are the things that, you know, we, we model for and teach our children that, um, that we can't make sense of everything. We don't know the outcome and we can't always say that if you do this and this, this is going to happen. It's just not, not the way it works, but what God says will always happen in his perfect timing. Mm, Amen to that. That is so true. And he will put the people in our path that needs to be, you know, your prayers about your son are going, he's going to use somebody. Oh, yeah. And just recently, he has done some amazing things and we're just praising him. Um, But, but yeah, you get to those hard points and it's, you can doubt so easily, but you got to fight that doubt with faith. Yeah, absolutely. We had a, you know, mixing in children who are very close in age are very different people. I joke that <laughs> my my children, people say, do they get along? I said, they're like oil and water. And if you <laughs> shake it hard enough, <laughs> shake it hard enough, they'll mix for a while. You're right. And, and they're, just, they're just different people right. and different upbringings. <laughs> and, you know, we had some very special things church-wise going on. And they were just fighting. And I wanted them to feel the spirit. (laughs) So bad. You know, you're trying to do these really spiritual things, these ordinances, and, you know, that should be, (laughs) you should be feeling, you should be glowing. Right. You you should be like, and you're not, and you're not. But the Lord put the right people in our path. You know, one of our church Mm. leaders that, you know, was just speaking to us in preparation for what we were doing. Right. Um, he grew up in a home that his parents did foster, fostering. And so he was able to speak to my 13 right. year old or my 12 year old and, and relate to her about having a new sister. And when we, um, awesome. when, when we were able to do this ordinance, it was, we ran into an old friend and he spoke truth to my daughters about me. Oh. And it was like the Lord was using him. I would have never expected to see him where we were. We're not, you know, really? it, it was yeah. it was great coincidence. And just telling me that, you know, I just about a great spirit. And, you know, um, I'd have to look it up 
<laughs> to see the. <laughs> apparently, it's a private thing that I'm not supposed to share because the spirit is not bringing it to my mind. But <laughs> you know, it was it was a great testimony to me. It was like God's voice was speaking That's to awesome. me through him, and my children got to hear that from somebody else who knew me. Right. And you know, I could have never anticipated that, but I really felt God's love at a end of a very hard struggle, you know, to, right. to maintain that, you know, have you learned that your spiritual journeys, you're like, where is the light? <laughs> Where's the <laughs> light of goodness that I'm supposed to be experiencing here? Right. It's not there because, because, um, children <laughs> and family <laughs> and life circumstances get in the way, but Me we, too. we persevere. I persevered through that. It was something that I thought I might have to reschedule and I decided not to. Right. And, and that was my reward at the end. And right. so, and we and need there to are sometimes, those. yeah, you can just barely see the next step in front of you and you just mm-hmm. have to put your foot out and move forward. And oh yes. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I had, um, so during my cancer journey, I it, people would send me scriptures and I wrote them out on cards and had them all over my bathroom mirror so right. that they would be my reminders in the morning of what God had spoken over me through other people. And in the middle of it was press forward because some days it was so hard just to get up and go, gosh, I have to drive, drive across town for another treatment. Um, and in just, I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't have the energy to do it, but just do it, just do it, get up, move forward. Um, and, and keep pressing forward because yeah. you're God's in the storm something in this. Yeah. You're in the storm and, you know, you're calling out to God and, you know, or uh, was it apostle Peter? Was it him who walked out to Jesus? I can't yes. remember which one. Yep. And, yep. You know, keep your sights on the Lord, mm-hmm. you know, but a lot of us sink. A lot of us sink and he yes. has to bring down his hand. And exactly. And, you know, that's just, that's just the nature. There's, there's a, um, sculpt, uh, sculpt, she does sculptures and, mm-hmm. um, I got to see it in person and it was just that scripture of these waves and, and the Lord just yeah. reaching out to him and, you know, keep your eyes on him. And, you know, I've had to learn too. there, there are journeys where you're, you're not as focused on the word of God as much things get in the way. And you drop yes. the ball. Uh-huh. And I've had to learn what my a motivating trigger is for me. And for me, it's music. Oh, you know, yeah. if I don't have the strength to read my scriptures or listen to my scriptures. Right. Sometimes I'll just listen to music and and yeah. hear the truth and and the word out of that and it will and that's enough sometimes. It is. You, f- you a, hear the thing. Lord speak to right. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we can get our, our list so long of, well, I've got to do this and I have to do that. And then, then that's when God will meet me. Um, but <laughs> that's not exactly it. Yeah, no. I was going through a hard season a couple months ago and all I could do was open up a devotional. And I'm not a devotional person. I am I usually like read chapters of the Bible at the same time. Sure, yeah. And, was, but yeah. I I was just bawling the whole time. And I was like, God, I, I know I need truth. This is the only the only way it's coming in right now. And then yeah, listening to music because it just you just get weary sometimes and you just say, God, I just need enough to get me through today. Yeah. This is all I can take. Uh, and yeah. you gotta have those go to moments. Mm-hmm. You know, those go to resources that you have to like kick yourself in gear. Okay, just go do that for a few minutes. Right. You know, one thing, I'm a type A person and I feel like I need to, if I'm going to study the scriptures, I need to sit down with my notebook and I need to remember <laughs> where it was. There are people that right. recall scripture and know exactly where it is. And <laughs> that's not me. And I've, the Lord has had to speak to me, just be in my word so I can speak to you. Right. Exactly. And, you know, I heard somebody say that, you know, we pray to speak to God and we read our scriptures to hear him. Yes. And not that he doesn't speak to us in other ways, but it reminded right. me just, just be in the scriptures. Yeah. Be in be in those and it's okay if you don't remember in two days, 
if you need to recall in a conversation, exactly. <laughs> you know, the, the spirit will speak to you. You know, I didn't know if it was exactly. Peter that walked out. I kind of guessed. And, yeah. you know, the Lord will speak through you. Right. And help other people. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to mess up. He never does. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, he knows, he knows us. So, yeah. yeah. That's one thing that I have learned recently too, is service. Um, mm. And up until literally like the last couple weeks, couple months, I always, I knew that if I was in service, I would kind of be distracted from whatever my struggle was. And I, and I just yeah. had this false idea that service was a distraction. And what uh, I've learned recently is that service is a way to be connected to our Father in Heaven. Yeah, That is a way for us to be with Him. And mm-hmm. it's not, that's why you have more strength. That's why you can get through more. It's not because you're forgetting yourself, you know, forget yourself and go to work. Right. That's true, but it's go to work and feel my my strength. You know, I had I had a good right. friend who I was just in a season of like I was just too tired to make food. Like mm. I just didn't want to. I would have loved to just Oh, I understand that one. That, yep. You know. <laughs> and but I was joking. I'm like I could go make something for a fundraiser right now because somebody needs it. And uh. she said, "Well, go make something and have a bowl of it." And I got right off the couch and I was able to do it, Aww, you know, yep. and it's, it's strange how we can, we can do that, but it's not the distraction. No, I learned that very strongly this recently, that it's not the distraction. It's the power of, of God. It, it connects it's you right with there. Christian community. Um, yeah. And we were built for community. We were not built to be alone. So mm-hmm. the more that we can be part of that community, to be involved in it, um, it feeds us in a way that just you know our alone time with God. It, it's a diff- It's different dimensionally, um, and it's it's something that um, we actually yearn for. It's why we watch a lot of those you know reality TV shows because we mm-hmm. we feel like we're kind of part of it, but yeah. um, but we're not really. <laughs> and so, but community does that holistically for oh, us. But- how I, I don't know about you, but I'm sure there's a lot in the, you know, special education, you know, life that feel isolated, that I they do. don't trust their community mm-hmm. um, because because they don't know. You know, right. there's many times yeah. that I'd be in conversation with other moms and just talking about my struggle. And I learned that they just didn't know what to say. They, they right. didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had to get over the fact that it wasn't my parenting. You know, yeah. how mm-hmm. many of us start out and don't expect special needs. And they're like, I couldn't. Not, I, I'm a good parent, right? I'm <laughs> teaching values. You know, I'm <laughs> I'm trying my hardest to raise this well, polite, you know, caring, right. expected behavior. And right. Uh-huh. It's and you're like probably doing you, over and above what a parent with a typical uh, child is doing. And you're not seeing yeah. the results that everybody else you is know, seeing. I, I say sometimes <laughs> that, you know, I'm exhausted because I'm having to be the executive function right. for my child. Sometimes <laughs> I'm having to fill in those gaps. Right. And, you know, I think going back to what I said that, you know, I think people thought they they weren't aware of our struggles right. at home mm-hmm. because we tried so hard to mitigate it. or they didn't believe us, right. oh, you yeah. know, yeah. It, that, yeah. you know, we want you to come visit or stay over and all of these things. And I'm like, that's just not going to work. Right. And it's not mm-hmm. that you aren't capable. It's, it's really that hard. Right. It's really that yeah. hard. Mm-hmm. You're never going to get this exactly. child to sleep. And no matter how much you try, mm-hmm. you know. It's just the nature of the beast. And I'm right. so glad that we're at least in that season of growing. I I, yeah. I I was so happy. I've been bragging about it almost. Like we went out for a late night date at bedtime hours for the first time in 12 years. Wow. And it felt so good. And so um, it was like a success. Yeah. That we... Yeah. I didn't know when this was going to come and here it was. And, you know, how many are those successes are delayed for a lot of us, aren't they? They are. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. But, you know, it, that's when you have those celebrations and oh, you yeah. just say, yeah, you know, that's we we, we got there. <laughs> we got there in the Lord's time because it was right. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. It wasn't where we thought, you know, I, I would say, you know, when we were having trouble with bedtime at six, seven, eight years old, I'm like, she's not going to need us come 12. Well, she does still. She does. You yeah. know? Exactly. Yeah. And we just have to accept that and take. Right. Be okay with that. Enjoy mm-hmm. the snuggle times and go back and forth of how things are. Right. It's it's how things are. Accepting it the where it is. Yeah. We, um. I was just saying with a, a parent, you know, we don't talk a lot about what what those adult years look like. Now I have three adults oh, all who okay. struggle. And, um, and, you know, my son decided after two days in the hospital last week that he was going to check himself out against doctor's mm-hmm. orders. And I could do nothing. And I was like, I texted my friend quick and I was like, you know, those sippy day cups or cup days, <laughs> I'm really yearning for them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because oh, I can't boy. control situations that need to really be controlled and um, life lessons are going to happen from this. And, oh, it's just so hard. But yet, God. But I think we need more <laughs> of those stories, too, because I think we're in, you know, I'm in those moments of seeing some behaviors that we're trying so hard. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, you know, if if we don't work on this, that's going to be a problem as an adult. Right. You know, and you really worry about that sometimes. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we got to live in the moment right. and do what we need to do and not plan for how things aren't right now. They're right. right now. We need to do that. Yeah. And, you know, I hope you can share more of that throughout your other podcasts as, as things go on. Things because- go on. Yes. I'm, I'm expecting a huge miracle. I'm, yeah. I'm praying for it and trusting will, in it. I will do that as well. Yeah, God, God is in it. So yeah, and that's what we're resting yeah. in. But but we don't. But, yeah. but that doesn't. That doesn't. Doesn't mean it's easy. Help it's us sleep at night. <laughs> if anything, it keeps us up in prayer. You know? Right. Exactly. Yep. You know? And surrounding ourselves with people that you know just labor with you in that. Um, I think you know as far as my my big advice is surround yourself with people who are willing to learn. Mm-hmm willing to learn about the struggles that you go through and are willing to pray or, um, you know, whatever is comfortable for them. A lot of people aren't comfortable, like Sonia is talking about. I mean, I having 10 siblings with special needs, I understand what goes on in your house <laughs> mm-hmm. more so than most people do. Um, and I've had a lot of people say to me, you are the first person I've talked to that really gets what the difficulties I go through. Um, yeah. And really, you know, a lot of times it's just, will you be willing to just hear me and and confirm that, you know, I'm being heard, um, that somebody else is just willing to, to walk alongside me and pray with me. Um, I don't want you to fix it. Don't want you to make, you know, all of those things. It's just, I just, you know, you just need somebody, a community around you. Yeah, so I just, just understands it. Right. You know, there's so yep. many times that it's just not understood. You know, I have right. a wonderful therapist. You know, mm-hmm. it took so long to for me to get to a therapist or get <laughs> my daughter to a therapist. Um, but she she has special needs experience with yeah. children. And you know, that the more helps. I speak with her, I'm like, "Oh, you get it." Right, you exactly. It. And yep. and that means so much more than somebody who just is academic yeah exactly yeah it's you, that they see it give you and, hope yeah mm-hmm. and you're not alone because how right. how easy is it for us to seek out special needs parents it's not like we're <laughs> we're in some community <laughs> like hey right. you know um here i'm struggling <laughs> come join my struggle we're not right doing that. yeah you know we're trying yep. to live among our friends and our family who don't Right. Struggle. I mean, mm-hmm. at least your family understands the struggle. <laughs> you right. Know, your parents do, but, um, yeah. Of which I'm so, so blessed that you sought me out to hear, you know, my story because I, I don't Absolutely. know. 
that I'm anything spectacular. I just do what I do. So much. And, and that's what makes, that's what makes your testimony wonderful because there are so many people out there doing what you're doing and they're feeling like, I don't have a voice. I don't have this, you know, these conversations, we want you to know that you do have a voice and that we, we know that you're out there (laughs) and these struggles are real. And, um, and yes, it, it isn't just a quick, oh yeah, do use the right curriculum and everything's going to be great in your house. And then you can oh, take boy. this Instagram photo. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't work like that. No, and it doesn't even work in neurotypical homes. Right. You know, exactly. If, if neurotypical homes, this is struggle. How much more are mm-hmm. we struggling? And I think, you know, going back to curriculum, we're going to find ourselves, you know, whatever style that we're liking, the people that love it and it works for them. They're going to say it's the best and it will work for everybody. And it does Uh it, Mm -hmm. you know, and you got to be okay with it. Just not and just prayer, find out what your kids like. And sometimes it might just be a worksheet or survival or say, we'll try again tomorrow. We'll try again tomorrow. We'll try again tomorrow. That's a good way to close. I love that. Yep. You know what? It's if it doesn't work today, we're just going to try again tomorrow. I, that's awesome. <laughs> so thank you so much, Sonia. This has been an amazing hour. You probably didn't think you'd fill an hour. We probably could have filled not, two or three. Great. <laughs> <laughs> great. Right. We might have to have you back. <laughs> oh, well, so. you know, if I can share, if, if I can help anybody, that's, that's what I want to do. I don't yeah. do it for accolades or anything like that, but yeah. if my testimony can put the light of, of Christ in somebody's heart and right. uplift them. Mm. But I'm, I'm not, I'm not an inspiration to people, but I, I can be an example. Oh, you are. So. You have been this hour, definitely. <laughs> thank and I appreciate thank you. your willingness to share. Um, thank you all for joining us for this conversation. And um, we'll be back again next week. We're going to talk about how to homeschool a child um, with um, hearing loss. And, and so you'll want to join us um, for that next week on the broadcast. But until then, God bless everybody. Take care. And we'll see you next week. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on this podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. This has been Empowering Homeschool Conversations with Peggy Ployer. This is Chris Christensen, and back in 2006, I started a simple project, a project to try and introduce more people to the Bible through Bible study called the Bible Study Podcast. It's a simple name and a simple idea. Each week, every week, we study one chapter of the Bible, talk about what it says and what that might mean for us today. To listen now, go to lifeaudio.com or search for the Bible Study Podcast on your favorite podcast app.